Hi everybody. This is the final uh, horizontal stabilizer video. There you can see I am, once everything is now primed, I am riveting on the doubler for the front spar. Here one of the flight instructors and the student stopped by, had a squawk to tell me about uh, one of the planes. We have four planes in our fleet and I assist the maintenance officer whenever I can, so plus we have uh, plane captains, I'm the captain of one of the planes, and there's always something going on. So here I'm uh, kind of explaining everything to one of the students, he's an amateur medical metal worker and was fascinated about uh, getting into helping me, so we want to give him a little overview of everything. Uh, before we start building the vertical stabilizer, did I say horizontal earlier? Probably. So someone was asking me about the suit. Growing up, my grandfather wore one-piece Dickies jumpsuit, I think, every day that I ever knew him, except for church. He worked at uh, Exxon uh, plant for 30 years, and, and the man was used to wearing one, and he always looked so comfortable. He was very active, and he didn't want to ruin any of his clothes, and neither do I, so I thought, I need something like this. Keep the aluminum dust and all the oil and everything else I'll be in contact with off of my regular clothing. So, I bought a couple of Dickies one-piece jumpsuits, and you'll see me in those mostly. One thing I will say about it is if you are anywhere near a tall frame, if you have to order tall suits, get the tall jumpsuit. I do wear a tall, but not exactly. I'm somewhere in between regular and tall, but it's just enough. I can get the suit on, no problem. Getting it off is, uh, it's a thing. I'm going to grab it. I gotta ram the bottom of the suit up into my uh, night sack. And then I can get one of the shoulders off and then I can pull it off. Anyway, on to the actual riveting. This is the next day, obviously. This requires riveting by hand with a rivet gun and bucking bar. So I have a 3x rivet gun. Normally have the power turned on to about 50 pounds for these uh, smaller rivets. And I have a tungsten bucking bar. It's not actually a bucking bar. It's just a piece of tungsten I bought off of eBay. It's the counterweight to some kind of controlled surface for military aircraft, which they're just selling now. It's five pounds. It's wonderful, but uh, it's a little bit heavy. I'm going to look at actually cutting it in half and making two two and a half pounders. But it works great. So the order they want you to do it in is to insert, well first of all you're not doing all of it at once obviously, so only the front spar and the rest of the frame is inserted into the skins. The rear spar is done later as a cap. So they want you to rivet down the front length of the front spar starting from the middle towards both ends. And then <coughs> down the middle rib, so that's what you'll see me doing here. Naturally with this being the very first thing that I've, well, on this plane anyway, that I've riveted using a rivet gun and bucking bar, I did a bunch of practice rivets beforehand. But this really was uh, riveting blind. So of course after each one I would go and take my rivet gauge and go check to make sure that it passed muster. There was only one I was disappointed with and uh, wound up riveting later. Plus I also had one where I skipped and put in a tiny little dent from the rivet gun. But it'll get bonded over later. Also if you look on the skin you can see where I've cut away the blue vinyl to just reveal the riveting areas. It's common practice. Helps save the skin in case of accidents. And I have accidents. Knocking crap over, spilling drinks. My wife calls me Spilly Little pet name. Ah, so, yes, finally getting a chance to use a nice rivet squeezer. 
and there's a video that I should link that I'll, I'll link to if I have time that's from the Cleveland Aircraft Tool and Mike explains that uh, it's not really a riveter it's really a dumpler that you just happen to be able to rivet with and he's right I use that thing for dimpling any chance I can get it's super fast and again this is one of those tools that pays for itself and makes life so much easier plus the lightweight air hose that you see attached I got from Cleveland also invaluable so there we go so now the rear spar is in and uh, thankfully this is all just rivet squeezer now you'll see me with a nice caliper so Cleveland supplies a little graph table that tells you based on the rivet size and length what the initial gap between the uh, well in this case like dome head and the work end of your squeezer should be so that when you are fully squeezed the distance between the two uh, dies should be you know three sixteenths of an inch or an eighth of an inch something like that just gives you a place to go so you don't accidentally wind up over squeezing uh, your rivet the first time after a while you just kind of learn oh this is six and you can just see it by hand anyway this is the end of the vertical stabilizer and next we will begin on the rudder see you